Hello everyone and a blessed Friday of the week of the Feast of Mid-Pentecost. What a wonderful feast Mid-Pentecost is. It combines the two rivers of grace from Holy Pascha and from the Feast of Pentecost into one. And we drink from both. Uh, I wish uh, everyone a soul-profiting second half of uh, celebrating Pascha all the way up to Pentecost. This was also the special loved feast of uh, Elder Joseph the Hesychist, who fell asleep in the Lord in 1959. Mid-Pentecost was something that he loved uh, tremendously. Today I'd like to speak to you about the Cell Phone 15. The Cell Phone 15. Some uh, PMP followers will know that we have uh, just completed a 10-week series. It's a series I've given a number of times, although I've expanded it a bit. Uh, the series is entitled Master or Slave? Question mark. Master or Slave? Taking Every Technology Captive to the Obedience of Christ. Uh, it's a series all about uh, technology, especially the digital revolution, the information age, uh, and what our life with screens, with computers and cell phones is really all about. There are 10 lectures and uh, they will be uh, produced, they're being edited now, they'll be released this next week uh, on PNP, so stay tuned. As a little taste of that, I want to uh, share, share with you a little bit about uh, the Cell Phone 15. The Cell Phone 15 is an exercise uh, that I do with folks at the end of the 10-week uh, series. It's about healthy, humanizing cell phone usage. You know, uh, the cell phone has become deeply incorporated into our lives, often not uh, even intentionally, it's just uh, done that. In fact, uh, that technology uh, prodigy and uh, CEO Elon Musk, the, the founder of Tesla and other companies, he has a company called Neuralink. And the intention of Neuralink is to connect the human brain to the computer and to put a chip in there. Now, if that concerns you, ha, huh, it might. Uh, if that concerns you, uh, I'm with you on that. In an interview uh, about that process, Elon Musk said that uh, we shouldn't be too concerned about putting a computer chip in our brains and connecting ourselves to a computer because uh, we're already used to having uh, portions of our bodies become uh, cybernetic because we have our cell phones. He says our cell phones are already a part of our hand. Oof. In many ways that's true, although they're not an organic part. Many of us live uh, with our cell phones and touch them. I think the average uh, touches for young people with to a cell phone is 2,600 times a day, a day. So Elon Musk does have a point, even though that's not a beautiful thing and it's certainly not a justification to put chips in our brains. And by the way, uh, Elon Musk was asked about his faith. He does not believe in God or pray to God. And if he, he was asked if he thought that God and science and technology could coexist, and he said, I think not. That should also greatly concern us because his worldview is, in fact, the dominant worldview of all the tech titans and their uh, companies. So cell phones are this important. You know, we've had cell phones. Uh, most of us have been using cell phones for 20 years. I remember when I obtained my first cell phone. Uh, I was resisting, <laughs> trying to get one, uh, and I caved in in 1998. So it's been 20 years, and 20 years is a long time. 20 years is certainly long enough for researchers, for studies to be done. And in fact, they are pouring off the presses right now. Competent study after competent study, pouring off the presses, giving us a, a, an objective view of the consequences of our cell phone usage. What have smartphones done to us? And in fact, most of the uh, professional commentary, most of the scientific research is not, is not good. It's uh, tragic. In fact, it has, uh, cell phone usage has become uh, a, a very serious addiction with very serious consequences. These consequences have a tremendous public consequences in that the use of cell phones uh, has become uh, a major, major cause of uh, car accidents on American highways. It also has all sorts of personal uh, consequences. Cell phone usage and its addictive nature has altered the way that we think. Our ability to concentrate has basically created us uh, within us a perpetual, a perpetual distractive, distracted existence. Uh, it's caused loneliness, uh, a breakdown in personal relationships, 
Um, just the presence of a cell phone, for instance, on a dinner table when, where two are conversing compromises the significance of the interchange drastically. And there are many more. If you want to hear about them, get the Master or Slave Technology in the Christian Life uh, series, which is coming out. But I would like to share, share with you just a, a brief, as a brief taste, to motivate you to think more deeply about this. Uh, what I call the Cell Phone 15, which uh, is this presentation that I make during the last lecture. The goal of the last lecture is how it is to pr present principles on how to use the cell phone in a healthy way, in a way that develops our love for God and for people and can be a means of um, deepening our relationships and having a more significant life rather than falling into the pit of all of these horrible addictions and destructive consequences. So I'm going to read uh, just a, an abbreviated form of my cell phone 15 for your consideration. Of course, this is coming from me. Uh, I'm not suggesting that, that there aren't better ones out there, but I'm, I'm using these principles to stimulate your thinking. This is what I want you to do is think about how you're using your cell phone and whether or not you might make some adjustments so that it might be in a more healthy way in a way that's more conducive to your grand vision of life, which is to become what God asks you to be, what he's working by his grace for you to be, so that you can seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness above all things. So, here we go. I'm going to rip through my 15, print, my 15 uh, principles, the cell phone 15. I'm not going to expand on any of them. I'm just going to say what they are, and uh, if you can listen to the lecture if you want to know more about them. These are basically when, principles on when, Never to use your cell phone. The cell phone 15. Number one, get up before your cell phone does. Don't use your cell phone to get up. Number two, go to bed after your cell phone goes to bed. Shut it off and have some time at night. Don't let it be the last thing that you do before you go to bed. Number three, do not use your cell phone unless you have completed your prayer rule. Do not use your cell phone unless you have completed your prayer rule. Mm. Number four, do not use your cell phone if you do not have a clear reason to use it. Don't meander into it. You may never leave. Number five, do not use your cell phone when you are in conversation with another. Number six, do not use your cell phone in a public place when people are near. Number seven, do not use your cell phone at the dinner table. Number eight, do not use your cell phone if you are on a getaway, a date, a vacation, a pilgrimage, a campout. Number nine, do not use your cell phone if you are in church or in worship. Number 10, do not use your cell phone if you are in class. Number 12, or number 11, do not use your cell phone if you are driving. Let me say that again. Number 11, do not use your cell phone if you are driving. Number 12, do not use your cell phone if you are walking in public. Number 13, do not use your cell phone if you are studying or reading. Number 14, do not use your cell phone on the Lord's Day. Number 15, do not use your cell phone while you are working at your desk. For more on that, stay tuned for the Master of, or, and, or Slave series, which is about to come out. And let me end with two recommendations for texts. One is this fantastic book, The TechWise Family, Everyday Steps for Putting Technology in Its Proper Place by Andy Crouch. Fantastic text. And the second is by Jaron Lanier, one of the fathers of virtual reality who has become uh, a tech apostate, at least at, in its current form, especially for social media. Ten arguments for deleting your social media accounts right now. Jared Lanier, fantastic uh, books. I wish you all well. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.